So this is Diamond Coat pre-finished LP smart side board and batten. And what we're gonna be working on today is this hairline crack between the freeze board and the soffit. We need to caulk that in. We also have some nails that we need to touch up paint. And we also have this situation right here. Now you can see that crack between those two trim boards. That's because LP specifies a 3 16 joint between those. Now that's a pretty good size gap, but here's what happens. Basically, as this LP comes out of the factory, it's really dry. So when it takes on moisture, it expands and that gap will grow together. So I'm gonna show you how to caulk that efficiently in this video. We'll go over just a few details of it. Here's what I'm using today. Uh, to get to that height. These are the Werner Adjustable Pro platforms. They are linkable, so you can link them together. Now, we've got a slight um, grade issue here. Um, it's a good thing. The grade goes away from the building. It slopes away from the building. Uh, but what this allows me to do, these platforms, is I can go a little bit shorter on the legs, closer to the building, and a little bit longer so that I have a level working surface. And they're just easier. So. Uh, Special K, he moves them as I move. So as I caulk, as I paint, he will move bench to bench to bench, and we'll just work our way down through there. That seems to be the most efficient. We used to set up a walk board and a ladder, but this seems to work just as well. So anyways, let's get into it. First to drink a Mountain Dew. You gotta have that nectar in the morning to get going. Um, first up, let's do a little bit of caulking. So for caulk, I like to use Big Stretch. Big Stretch from Sashco works really well, and LP does specify that you have to use a specific, I can't remember if it's, uh, here we go, A T A S T M. it's gotta be uh, class 25 or 920, I can't remember all that good stuff, but basically it's gotta be really elastromeric, so it has to be able to stretch. In my opinion, this is the best sealant on the market for LP Smart Side, so that's why we use it. I like to put a little piece of masking tape around it. That way I can always know where the point of my caulk tube is. Does that make sense? So takes just a second and then the orientation of my point is always the same. Another thing that I like to use, and a lot of painters do this, um, I use a wet sponge. So anytime I get caulk on my finger, I can just wipe that wet sponge and it comes back with clean fingers. So that works out pretty well. But uh, we'll get to it here. I'm gonna start over here. So I don't want a really, really small bead, but I don't want a huge bead either. Nice and smooth. Now, a debate that'll come up from time to time is whether or not to tool that caulk. And I'll never forget what I read on a forum one time, I think it was Contractor Talk way back in the day. If you've ever tried to remove caulk that hasn't been tooled, it's much easier to remove. So I always tool the sealant. OSI quad, that's a different story. Quad, it tells you right on the tube not to tool it. Um, it is toolable, you can tool it if you know how to do it, we've done it, but you gotta know how to do it. In this circumstance, I'm talking about big stretch specifically, caulks like that. Okay, so I've caulked down to there, now I need to switch to paint. So I gotta paint all of these nail heads and we've got our nice touch up paint from Diamond Coat. And we're just using a little cheap throwaway foam brush. And literally all you have to do is dab it. So I've got the inside of this that I need to caulk up. Looks like I've got a little hole here too that I'm gonna have to caulk up. But I've got the inside of this uh, soffit that I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to paint real quick. So we'll do that. We don't want any exposed edges. All exposed edges have to have either sealant or primer or paint per LP's manufacturer's installation instructions. So that's what we're gonna give it. I'm gonna go ahead and do this here too because that's a little bit bare. 
I'll come back and caulk that little bit. I'm not too worried about it. But we want a nice coat on there. I just paint everything that I can. Now, that's just one less thing that I have to worry about. Like obviously, I'm gonna have to climb up there and paint all of these, you know, little nails. But if I'm already here, I go ahead and do it. It saves time down the road. Now I need to work my way around here. I want to make sure I give that a nice coating. So see, he just keeps moving the benches for me. It works out well. Just easier that way. Works for us, I say. I should put it that way. Works for us. Okay, next up we've got this 3 16 joint. Remember I talked about it. LP has to have that expansion and contraction joint between the two pieces. So this is a pretty wide gap. Um, this is the best way that I've found to address caulking this. Now, a lot of guys, they'll just take their caulk gun and go after it and start squirting it in there. Then they'll wipe it off with their finger. And guess what? All of this grain on both sides gets filled with caulk. You walk away from it, you come back a year later, and it's dirty where the caulk is, and you can see it smeared down into that grain. And it looks awful. Looks really bad. A lot of guys don't take the time to do what I'm about to do. So here's what I do. I take my masking tape. This is inch and a half, and this is the Tadpole tape cutter. If you don't have one, I highly recommend them. They're awesome. Once you get used to them, you can't hardly go back to using masking tape without it. But this does not take an extra minute to do what I'm about to do. But the problem is a lot of guys are in a big hurry. Time is money. Time is money. Well, it all pays the same in my opinion, and I would rather my name look good when people come to look at my job site and they see this caulk joint, uh, my reputation is worth more than a couple minutes of time. This only takes an extra <laughs> one minute, if that, to do it this way. All right, so now we're taped up. We're ready for our big stretch. Now, here's the thing with the big stretch. If you have had a failure with big stretch, it's probably because the joint wasn't big enough or you didn't put enough caulk in there. Watch how much caulk I put in here. I want it blowing out of this joint. The thing about it is you have to give big stretch a chance to do its job. So I don't want to just skim the surface with the sealant. I want to fill the void as much as I possibly can. Now. Now that that's filled, I just take this small putty knife that I've put some tape on it, uh, keeps it protected, and now it's just as simple as wiping that sealant off. See how easy that is? Now you get this little hair right here, so you have to just go into that a little bit. But I mean, you can, you can really do some work with this. A lot of times I'll only touch it one time that's it right there. Now I'm done with that. Now I can peel my tape. That did not take that much extra time. And look what we're left with. A perfect joint. You walk away. You leave that alone. You come back. All of that flared edge is going to lay down. It's going to look perfect. It's going to look beautiful. That's the way you do it in my opinion. Now you come back. And after you've done that section, then you finish this, you follow through here. Sponge. See, 
See that? Now, doesn't that look good? It's beautiful. Got to touch up these nails. We're going to get on that right now. A little more sponge action. Check this out. Wet, wet your sponge. Wipe your finger off in it, and you're left with cleanliness. I love it. All right, we're going to touch up these nails close to that joint that I just caulked. And we'll just keep moving. Works out really well. So if you, uh, if you like the video, like and subscribe. And also, one more thing to note. If you've never tried Sashco products like Big Stretch, I'm about to drop it, and you'd like to try it, click on the link in the bio of my Instagram and they will send you a free sample kit of Sashko's products. They're really nice products. We use all of them, Lexel through the roof, Slab, Slab is a really good one. We like Slab a lot. Mortar Fix, we'll use the color match for the diamond coat uh, where blue meets blue. We'll show a video on that most likely. And here's the finished result. Doesn't that look awesome? Started raining on us just now. So not cool, but it's up underneath the eave, so no problem there. I'll take a step back so you can see it. Wow, doesn't that look good? That's how you get it done. Take you around the side of the house. So I've got to do this section up here. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'll do that obviously off of extension ladders. So I'm going to have to do all of that but i did get the front done today as well check that out it's a nice crisp line that it leaves you with this diamond coat is really nice stuff i will say this though let me show you this real quick we are having an issue with the color match and i haven't had this issue with diamond coat before but see where i touched up that nail head you can see exactly where the touch-up paint's at. So they need to do some work there. I think we're literally going to have to go to town, buy a gallon of paint or a quart of paint because their touch-up is just pitiful. So, not cool. I love Diamond Coat products, but that they need to work on. But you can see how nice and crisp that line is. Let me stand back so you can see the house. That's looking really nice, isn't it?